Hi everybody, today we're going to do a tutorial on Google Classroom. First thing you're going to do is inside of your Google Apps, you're going to select Google Classroom. Yours is going to be blank. To start a class, you will go ahead and click Create Class. You'll enter your information. You're only required to do a class name, but go ahead and fill it out as you see fit. Now, if you teach a middle school subject, you'll have, of course, multiple classes, so you can divide yours out by section and create a class for each section, or you can go inside what I'm gonna show you is I'm a first grade teacher, so I teach all subjects, so I have my Google Classroom divided into subjects within one class. So to each its own, whichever is more organized for you. So I've already created my class. I'm gonna go ahead and select it. So here on stream, this is going to be the timeline of your classroom. Students are able to comment, and post, you can undo that and I'll show you how in just a minute. And you'll be able to create announcements and schedules and every assignment that you post will be here as well. So first thing I wanna show you to do is how to not allow students to comment if post. Now, unless you've had those conversations with your students, giving them the rules of posting and commenting and how to be courteous to each other, I would suggest disabling it. To do that, you're going to go to settings and you're going to select only teachers can post or comment. So go ahead and click save. Right here is the class code. This is what it, you're going to use to give to the students to log in and I'll talk about that a little bit later. So we're going to spend most time here in classwork tab. So as you can see in the classwork tab, yours will be blank. I have mine created into subjects. Google Classroom calls these topics. So each of my topics are subjects. We have reading, writing, math, science, and social studies. And I put these cute little emojis. I found this idea on Facebook and I was like, yeah, I gotta do that. So I wanted it to be organized and I thought this was the perfect way. And here it is. I'll show you how to do that now. First, you're gonna go to create. You're gonna create a topic. Let's call this topic art. Not art, art and you add it. So within this topic, you'll be able to create your assignments and upload them on here. So you can move them however you want to. And the next thing I'm gonna show you how to do is to create the assignments that will be inside of your topics or subjects. I'm just gonna say subjects. So you're gonna to go to create and click assignment. And we're going to do a reading assignment. So we're gonna go straight over to topic and select reading. So this assignment will only be in your reading topic. And the title of this assignment will be Epic Books. So the instructions we're gonna give is to read a book in Epic and complete the questions. The next thing you're gonna do is add the link to Epic Books. And I have it here. And my students already have their password and login for Epic. If you need a tutorial on how to set up Epic Books for your classroom, it is free now um, during the quarantine, go ahead and leave a comment down below and I'll be more than happy to submit a video for that. The next thing I'm going to add is a Google Drive document that we've already created. And it's just going to be reading comprehension questions that they will answer. What you're going to do when you submit a file you have to decide how you want this file to be viewed or shown to your students. The first, top, the first way is just when the students are able to view it. They won't be able to edit it or anything. They're just only able to see the file. The next, the next way is the students can edit the file. Now, all the students will be editing one file. So if you had something to where you wanted your students to collaborate on and work together on an assignment, that will be the way. The last one is making a copy for each student. You're probably gonna use this one more often because this gives it copy to each student to turn in. After you do that, you can go over here. You can assign a point value, a due date. We've already selected the reading topic and a rubric if you wanted to add that. After everything looks good, you can go ahead and assign it. You can assign it to a future date or assign it right now. And that's what we're gonna do. Okay, 
our assignment has been made and it's shown here. We have our EPIC and our comprehension questions. You can see how many people have turned in their paper. It says that zero are assigned because we have not added anyone yet. Let's go ahead and do one more and we'll do math this, this time. So we're gonna create another assignment. We're gonna call this assignment fractions. We're gonna have them to watch the video and complete activity. So we're gonna add our link to our video, which is on YouTube. And it's just a cute little book by called Gimme Half by Stuart J. Murphy. We're gonna add that link. And we're also going to add a Google Drive file. Okay, after we add the file, we're gonna make sure we say, make a copy for each student. So we've added those two files. And notice, you can add a link, a file, a YouTube, or something that is in your Google Drive. You also have the ability to create right here in Google Classroom. So that's a neat thing that you can do as well. After you're, after you're done, you can apply your due date. Make sure you select math because this is going to be in the math topic. If you wanted to assign a rubric, rubric do so and then assign it to your students. Okay, so if we scroll down, we should be able to see, to see our math assignment and our reading assignment. So if you're wondering what the student will receive and how they would be able to complete the assignment, please stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll show you what the student view looks like. Okay, so from here, we're gonna go to where it says people. This is where you're going to add your students to cl your classroom. Now, in order to do so, you need their email address. For our district, we can find our email address using TAC. That's what we use for our district and it's under their personal information. You're gonna send their email address along with the, your class code to them via, via class dojo or remind or whatever you're using. They'll be able to use that email to access Google Classroom they'll insert the class code and they would automatically be joined to your class. So I'm going to invite a student, which is myself, and I will show you, like I said at the end of the video, the student view of how Google Classroom is set up for them. The next tab is the grade tab. We don't have anything yet because a student has not been added, but this is where you'll go to get all your, to see all your grades, if they have been graded or not. You'll be able to grade them here as well and then submit them back to the student. You also have the Google Calendar that has all of the assignments, what date they will be turned in on, and everything that you post on your Google Classroom all the documents will be saved to a class drive folder. One more thing I wanted to point out on this tab, which I think will be beneficial for our first graders in our primary grades is the material tab. Now let's say you wanted to give your students maybe a 120s chart or a sight words list, maybe an anchor chart. You can do all of those things in the material section. This will not assign an assignment to them. This is just something that they can use ongoing in your classroom and you can take it off whenever you see fit. Okay, so like I said, I wanted to show you at the end of this video what it looks like in the student view. So let's see. So you're still here and that means you wanna see what it looks like in student mode. So I'm using my cell phone to do this. So the parent is going to download the Google Classroom app on whatever device that they're using. They're going to use the Gmail email address that you're going to provide them and log in and insert the class code that you're going to provide them as well. Once they get there, they're going to, going to join class, insert that code, and then join the class. So here's what it looks like on student mode. It has all the assignments that your students will see and any announcements or anything that you have given to them as well. We're gonna go ahead and check out the fraction assignment that we assigned to our students. We're gonna watch the video first. 
award-winning series of 63 books. So they'll watch the video, then return back and complete the assignment. Okay, so this assignment says draw lines to show four equal parts. I'm just going to, the best way I can, complete. So that's what they would end up doing. When they are done, they're going to click the three buttons at the top, click save. So once it saves, you'll go ahead and turn it in and their work has been submitted. And last but not least, we are back in teacher mode and want to show you what it looks like when someone submits an assignment. So click on grades. You can see that we have two things that have been assigned. One has been turned in. It's the fraction paperwork that we have completed. So let's take a look at it. Go ahead and click on it and view it. Shows that they have completed it. We didn't complete it, but we're going to move on from there. And we're going to assign them a grade. So we're going to give them an 80. And we're going to return it to them. And they will be able to view it right away. They'll get an email notification saying that they have received a grade. Hope this video helped you. Thank you for watching The Helpful Teacher. Bye, guys.